and it is here to present organizing a new internet. So not a very small challenge, but uh, we like that idea. All right, so just right, so yes. So we got that. Hello, everyone. Um, <laughs> Before I start, um, I'd like to ask you guys a question. How many of you uh, have ever, for some reason or another, been denied access to your money or denied access to something because you don't fit the criteria, like you're under 18 or you don't have the credit rating? Show of hands? Yeah. Um, when I first went into cryptocurrency, the main reason I looked at Bitcoin and the main reason I was attracted to it was because I couldn't use PayPal. I was under 18. I was too young to register. And when I saw Bitcoin, even though at the time you couldn't actually use it to buy anything, I realized that this was the solution. You could do whatever you wanted with it and you could spend it no matter who you were. It basically took away all the barriers of entry, regardless of race, religion, location, whatever. And when I saw Ethereum and I saw that it was a programmable platform that allowed you to do that with basically anything online, like a DNS server or social networking or just networking in general, like IP addresses or anything. I I quickly tried to implement that in as simple way as I could and now I'm going to show you what I came up with after doing that. But I make no claim that these the ideas are, are original because everybody wants to do this. Everybody wants to decentralize the internet completely and I'm just, this is just like one implementation of that. Okay, so organizing a new internet and what Ethereum can do, can allow us to do. We all know that the internet is flawed. Um, you're being watched. That's not, a, that's not a question at all. Even if you're encrypting your connections, your, I, your ISP provider can record every single IP address you connect to so they know who you're talking to. They can record um, your DNS queries, they know where you're going. You're being tracked through these methods, your DNS, your ISP, your other, like, pretty much everything you do online is tracked and watched and it's hard to join in to, like, that community, the internet, because you have to pay an ISP, who has to pay an IIG, and everything on the internet is top down. Like, it's hard to join in from the bottom. And therefore, it's arguable to say that you're not safe online. Well, you are safe. Things like HTTPS and stuff, they provide a certain modicum of security, but it's not enough to truly trust what you do online. Um, if you look at the slides, you'll see a map of what I cons what, what's considered the backbone of the internet, which is the submarine cable network. And if you didn't know, basically every major piece of internet traffic goes through this network. Um, in a country like, say, the US, there's only a few main places where traffic comes into the country and leaves and whatnot. And especially if you look down there at the bottom of Asia, you'll see Bangladesh, which has only one, only one major cable coming into it. And that means that the government has complete control over every single piece of traffic that comes in and out of the country, which really isn't cool. <laughs> Um, and who's in charge of all this? Well, the thing about the internet is it is distributed. It's distributed between countries, nations, but it's certainly not decentralized. Every single IP address is given authority to be distributed by ICANN, which is based in America. And 
and then that authority is given to countries which give it to ISPs and if you want an IP address you have to pay your ISP for the IP address and that's not what we want to be doing because we want a free internet and we want everyone to be able to participate in it. Um, therefore the identifiers, DNS entries, like your web page or your IP address are neither decentralized or distributed because someone ultimately has control over all of it. There are societies and there are systems that try to help that, like the Internet Society or other small things, but ultimately they don't have any say in your security. The current solutions we have to this are alternate internet routes like OpenNIC, which tries to be democratic and basically a replacement for your DNS provider. And then you have Namecoin, which is completely blockchain based and it's basically a replacement for what we're doing, what, what, it's basically another version of what I'm trying to do as well on Ethereum. Um, MeshNets, um, I'm guessing we have a pretty technical cloud. How many people here actually have set up or used a Hyperborea node at some point? No one? No? Okay. Well, um, Hyperborea or CJDNS is a system that is extremely simple. It's almost one click installation and allows you to connect to anyone, connect to this like global mesh net um, just by connecting to one of your local neighbors or something like that and basically gives you access to the entire internet just by using this one small client. <coughs> and it really, really decentralizes the internet. And then we have other things like Tor, I2P, Freenet, Jondo, Nunet, all these other things that I'm sure many of you here have used. Yes? Yes? No? No? Um, which also try to do the same thing. They try to protect people's privacy, they try to keep them anonymous, but Sometimes, like in the case of Tor or I2P, it's really slow. Freenet is extremely, it's a different model completely where everybody's content is distributed with everyone. And ultimately, it's, it's a compromise which we shouldn't have to deal with. Um, okay, so it's not really showing up there, but it's over, showing up over there. Zuko's Triangle is one of the, it's a description of what you want in the naming system. Um, you want, you want it to be global, which means anybody, anywhere can have access to it and have the same information from it. You want it to be memorable, which means it's not some random digits and stuff like in uh, Onion address or something. And it's not just, it's, it's something that humans can understand. And you want it to be s secure, which means that no one can come in and say, oh look, you have this thing and now I want it, so I'm taking it away from you. Like you do with so many DNS attacks that you have nowadays where someone defaces someone's website just by changing the response that a DNS server gives based on that query. And what you can do is instead of compromising on speed, compromising on human readability, is you take these ideas, you take mesh networking, meme coin, you take Ethereum for the trust, and you build it into a layer that instead of the, what we have right now, a top-down ISP, IIG, and your DNS, your DNS servers where you get your names, and then that's where you get your trust later on with SSL and stuff. You take it from the other way around. You have your trust from Ethereum, and then you build a name coin on top of it, which has already been done. Um, and then on top of that, you build a network based on those nodes and contracts which use mesh networking to basically give access to anyone who wants it to the internet. Um, yeah. You, three criteria again. You've got 
um, namespaces, you've got connection, and you need trust. The blockchain gives you trust. And connection is, comes from the under, underlying protocol of this. And DNS servers generally give you the namespaces and stuff so it's human readable. But what you can do, and what Namecoin has done, is that you take a blockchain, you take name servers, and you get Namecoin. Or you take the blockchain or cryptography in general, and you take connection and you get a mesh net like CJDNS. What you want to do is you want to take those two ideas and mesh them into one idea where you have connectivity, human readability, and trust all in one place. And that's what we can do with Ethereum because it's extremely flexible. And everything we need to do that is already in place. As in, um, Gavin's also wearing the shirt today. Um, it's basically name coin in five lines of code running on an um, Ethereum script, but not Ethereum script, CL. Um, all we have to do to basically get this up and running is you agree on a protocol and you start connecting to each other and you've got a completely decentralized internet that anyone can use. <laughs> Let's... This is a... It, what it would look like in real life would be... Imagine a hard disk drive where the Ethereum blockchain is the actual hard disk. And you've got the client running on top, like um, Charles said, as, as an app or like a plugin to the Ethereum client. And on top of that, you have your browser or whatever you use to connect to the internet. And you use that client to connect to the mesh net, you use it to talk to your browser, and basically you take all the information from the blockchain, and instead of being completely centralized and have one single namespace like a DNS does, you can have many where people don't have to trust each other anymore. And what it would look like on the blockchain would be something like this, where you have one root server, Everybody, whoever wants to join in, could have their own like little contract where they keep their own information. It connects to different parts outside of the blockchain or inside the blockchain. And you can use this to build things anywhere from social networks to entire mesh nets to payment systems or trust systems. And as you can see, it's already kind of like, it looks like Ripple, or it looks like something you would imagine <laughs> a neighborhood to look like. And you already have communication between people, but it's not based on anybody's, it's not based on any third party or anything. A little bit more technical, um, You've got, okay, in this example, there are sort of the, peop the contracts that are owned by individual people, and there's a main root contract that they all trust, and then there's another one that's trying to pretend to be the other one, but it isn't really. And in that use case, you've got many, like, contract, you've got, say, the root contract, and it contains information like um, it contains the address of the person who created it, so you can give them donations, it contains URLs to basically things that are on the real internet, it contains um, it contains the contract addresses of anyone who wants to like communicate with it, so they send their contract address to it. And all of this stuff is already on the blockchain. You've already got the name registration thing, which you can do on the Ethereum blockchain. And you can... And what this gives you is something that's flexible and secure, and you get your own configurable DNS servers, and... 
you don't have any more censorship because even if somebody, even if nobody connected to you, your information would still be on the blockchain regardless of that. And that means that no one can take it off. And by being completely decentralized, but also, I mean, you can control who you connect to, this means that um, it's also pretty safe because anyone can decide not to connect to content that's not very good. Okay, um, I should probably start again. <laughs> Is that it? You finished? You finished? Yeah. Alright, well, good job, mate.